Hello folks and welcome to our game for the very last show of 2022. It's going to be a cracker because we're rounding up some great stuff that happened this year. Brought to you by rstore.ie which is the official merchandise home for our game. .ie. Michael, are you looking forward to this because we're going to have a bit of a quiz as well? Yeah, um, and we're going to have to come up with some sort of a suitable forfeit as well. So something that uh, something maybe early in the new year that one of us is going to have to do that we don't particularly like maybe. Yeah, um, I suppose hurl with the actual stick for you would be one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take that as a compliment to be honest with you. I know my limitations. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I suppose what else could we do? Well, look, viewers, if you want to suggest any forfeits, now we're going to be going through a rake of categories for the years, things that we, you know, best match, best this, best that, the whole lot. But viewers, get your comments in, let us know your thoughts or let us know any categories you want us to touch on. Um, but a couple of things to to touch on before we get to that, which is Mark Coleman missing the entirety of the inter-county season because of having to get knee surgery. That is a huge blow to Cork. And to be fair, to Hurling in general, because he's great to watch. Yeah, it is. Um, so obviously, there was a bit of maybe confusion about what his role has been over the last couple of years or where is he best utilised or that. But um, yeah, he's. it's funny. like He's one of the elder statesmen nearly on the squad outside of Horgan and probably Damien Cahillan maybe. Um, and just so silky on the ball, There's, you know, you'll probably go a long way to find someone who, somebody who uses the ball as well as Coleman can. Uh, so that's kind of a that's kind of a big hit for Pat Ryan to take before things even start. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, probably means that Kieran Joyce is going to be thrust in there at number six from the get go. We actually, I chatted to the Rocco Sullivan earlier a couple of months ago, and he was talking about maybe they should have done that anyway from the start of the year. Another thing, Johnny Cohen, he's uh, announced his retirement from Intercounty Hurland, so uh, that means that. Henry Shefflin's going to have to look for more options. Of course, uh, Cohen scored a goal this year for Galway in the Championship against Kilkenny. Colin Reardon, there's talk of him making a return with the Tipperary footballers after training with them last week. So you can imagine I have my fingers crossed there. Uh, Tip and Offaly have been fined €250 each after playing a challenge match a couple of weeks ago. They weren't allowed until January the 1st. So look, let's be honest, there's challenge matches going on up and down the country, but Tipperary and Offaly got caught. Just on that as well, like, like Tipperary played another challenge game that weekend against... Um... You know, Wait, no, are, you, are, you try, are you trying to bankrupt Tipperary here? No, something? no, but i tell you what I'm saying is like they played another challenge game that weekend, you know, definitely. It's out there against, you know, the most populated county in the country. And there doesn't seem to have anything seems to have come of that. But Shane, I'll put it to you this way. Uh, an old fella rang me yesterday, big hurler man, big GA man. And he just, the first things he says was, fine for playing hurling. That's what he says to me. They were fined for playing hurling. Fine for playing a match. It's actually bizarre when you think about it in real simplistic terms like that. They're back training about six weeks, be it Liam Cattell, be it Johnny Kelly, be it Michal who be it anybody. It, training is grand, but you want to play games and you want to get a look at guys and you're going to make judgment calls um, on, you know, what your extended panel is going to be, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there, based on games, realistically. Not who can put up the best Bronco result test or something like that. Do you know what I mean? That's what you're going to be basing it on. So it's a bizarre rule when you think about it. And like anecdotally, there are counties that enter breadth of the country playing challenge games wearing college jerseys, wearing club jerseys, wearing X, you know, X, Y, and Z to make, make it look less obvious. Um, Mead were Mead were running like a regional competition. That's a sense, you know, and then I wouldn't say they're all part of the county squad or anything like that, but they were, you know, there's ways and means around it. I remember one time a county which I won't name um set up a fictional tournament. Uh, was it Offaly? Uh, no, a, a fictional tournament. It was a Leinster County, set up a fictional tournament and put results in the paper uh of games that had never taken place, but it was just an excuse that they were playing trial games and stuff like that but they weren't supposed to be playing them and they ended up in the paper and just kind of cracked but it was a way around the winter training ban um but i just say when you look at it in basic terms that teams were fine for playing hurling it, it's it is a bit bizarre really yeah and kilku were on the search for new management after conduct gilligan and richie thornton they stepped down after just one year in charge though of course it, you know they were part of the um, was richie i know obviously conduct was involved with them under uh, mickey moore and i just can't remember off the top of my head if richie was um, so they're looking for new management there. They'll be looking to bounce back and maybe reclaim their Ulster title and obviously push for it in down as well. There wasn't the three um, bouts of extra time and penalties um, in, in one or two of the games to get through down this year. Uh, let's see, new meet sponsor, says Richard Hogan. Uh, so that's Gordon Elliott, isn't it? No, Gordon Elliott was uh, displaying the jersey. It's Nolan oh. Valerie Moore of Bechtel Stud and they have... Uh, 
a tea room kind of a coffee shop place, but they've heavily invested in Gordon Elliott's yard and uh, now they've heavily invested in uh, in me GA as well. They brought back the old kind of square styling on the mm. jersey. It's been which, brought which, back a few times, to be yeah, fair. It has, but I'm actually not sure. I think there's too much going on. Um, yeah. You might be able to bring up the jersey. It's on Gordon Elliott's Twitter, Shane, but you might be able to bring it up there. There's too much going on and the writing is too small. I think, I think if you have a sponsor, it needs to be like front and center and it needs to be really obvious when there's too many things going on i don't really think you can see it that well that's just that's just my own opinion to be honest well, with you. Up, yeah i'll bring it up here now yeah gordon elliott yeah there we go so yeah look yeah i mean for me now it's yeah there's an awful lot going on there between obviously the Bective stud uh logo and within that there's lots of detail then above that you've got the yellow lines and you've also got the crest and the sponsor and the ga logo as well there's a fair bit going on there actually i just wonder would people out there have any comments in terms of what do they think the best ga jerseys going into next year or that were of this past year what do they reckon they were what do you think Tipperary oh. jersey obviously number one again <laughs> i Still love, and I they haven't changed it much. I was in did the GA uh, the Crow Park tour recently, and I saw an old version of it, and I love it, and I still love the new version. The UCC Skull and Crossbones is as nice a jersey as is out there, in my opinion. I I love it, and they haven't changed it. It's still the black and red with the white Skull and Crossbones in the middle, and they haven't you know ruined it with a big sponsor or anything like that. That's probably still my favorite jersey, I'd say. Yeah, uh, let me see. Who's got... There's some bad jerseys out there. Normally when there's um, amalgamations and both sides, if there's, you know, at least two sides, obviously, uh, sometimes there's three, but they all want to get their colours in there. So I've seen one before. It's got... I can't remember. It's somewhere in Limerick. Is it drum colour or Broadford, maybe? There's, like, uh, black and amber, but there's also red in there as well. No, I, I could be saying the wrong club. Rat Klein now in Longford, they've got green blue and white which is probably just a little bit much there are a few clubs out there who have jerseys that are probably not quite as tasty as they could be i think kilku's jersey is pretty cool the black Kil and white kilku's jersey is nice i quite like the um i obviously hate tipperary but i quite like the tipperary goalkeeper jersey is it that kind of mer uh dark navy slash metallic gray kind of jersey i think that's quite yeah. nice yeah well it'd be like you to defer to tipperary to be fair you do have decent colors I think we, I, I think we had a couple of a couple of years ago. We had one of the nicest jerseys out there. I think it's 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 nice now, but I don't think it's as nice as it was. Um, if you're on the flip side of the scale, but jerseys that people don't like, the Carlo one always comes back to one that people don't like because again, I actually low, I like it a lot now. I have to say, you know, I that think it's actually proven. I like it a lot, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I actually, I actually quite like it. But sometimes when there's too many things going on, as you said there, people don't really, you know, I wouldn't be mad on that type of thing. I, I like, I've always liked the the Carlo jersey, and even uh, when it was the old long sleeve kind of version as well, I used to like that one too. Yeah, I used to think of like, uh, do you know the bird's custard box when I used to think of the uh, the Carlo jersey? But I don't mind it so much these days because they've kind of um, they've gone more for one color kind of central theme is one color and then trim with the others but then when they had the red shorts this year i didn't think that that worked and was it um was it bally giblin this year or was it um what's the crowd that won the junior monster in the hurling marquee play center back from? no that is bally giblin, bally giblin they've yeah. got the red trim at the bottom of the shorts and they've got red and white hoops i'm not sure if that works either we'll go to a few more of the comments uh who are you up for in the offley versus tip minor hurling final well we're not going to do the watch along so uh yeah i think we know who won it anyway the, the, the vote the votes came through for the the 2022 season in review just pipped the monster yeah. final and the the minor final so we've gone with that and uh listen there's so much to review when you go back through it we've a lot of interesting categories and it'll obviously mix club and county as well so it should be interesting yeah if Kil uh, so i think this is part of grace talking about what the forfeit might be if kilkenny win the all ireland shane can wear the black and amber stripes to the tipperary county final jesus that's <laughs> 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 Jesus, Barry, come on! Give I think, I think to be fair, I think you'd be confident enough that Kilkenny won't win the All Ireland, so you probably would take that bet. Yeah, I'll take that on. So basically, I end up with not having to do a forfeit. If there you go. Better. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Like. All right, okay. <laughs> uh, red circle in the middle might have been better given the colours and have a red cap. Uh, does that refer to the meat jersey? I I he's talking about horse racing colours there. I'd say more than anything else is a red <laughs> with a red cap. But again, some of the that's why I just think I just think there's too much going on in that Beckham mm. stone. I think you need to go 
really, really basic. And you should, I think you always should be able to see the sponsor from afar. I'll put it to you that way. And the old white key pack across the front, you could see that from afar. And even the Mead Ladies jersey now as well. To me, for a sponsor, I think you want to be getting bang for your buck, you know? Yeah, so Flash, who we haven't heard from in a while, says, Good afternoon, lads. Hope you're keeping well. Haven't been able to keep up with the live shows, but I've been keeping up to date with the show whenever I can, as much as I can. Just wanted to pop in to say thanks a million for the brilliant coverage this year. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year and many happy returns. And as Richard Hogan says, good to see you back, Flash. Uh, Flash, I, 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 I wasn't in any sinister way or anything like that, but I was actually thinking, of, I was actually thinking about you the other day, so we haven't heard from Flash in a while. So the boys love Flash as well, I have to say. Because <laughs> Flash, you went missing there for a while earlier on in the year. And uh, Joe Butler and the boys were couldn't get over wondering, wondering where you were. So great to have you back. Great to have you back. Yeah, uh, LOL, Rat Klein, Han Longford. I'm not really going out. I'm not, you know, going after them per se, but uh, it's just, I think that combination of colours is great. What's your favourite county jersey, Shane? Uh, or Happy Christmas, Shane. Happy Christmas to you as well, Test Case. Uh, I think the Tipperary Finches jersey is hard to beat. And I think there was even a comment, yeah, Ace Ollie 180, the yellow Finches tip goalie jersey is iconic. Yeah, very nice jersey. And Fla just put in a comment here and he said the Westmead one this year was a lot better since they tidied up the sponsor. True, yeah. Le new leash one for 2023 is brutal. Uh <laughs> As is your comment, Fla, you're very, very brutal. I mean, <laughs> what do you really think? It must be the same lad in O'Neill's who did the new Mead one. Um, I do like uh, West Mead to be rivals just in the Midlands, but it, it's a lovely jersey in fairness. And I think that they've gone, they're maroon, it's mar you know, maroon is the colour really, maroon and white in West Mead, and they've just gone with predominantly maroon. I think it is a nice one in fairness. I used to always love the old Cork ESAT Digifone one as well, back in the day, around 99. Um mm. Listen, I, I wouldn't be a big fan of Sports Direct uh, and, and I wouldn't be a big fan. Of, like, they're getting their bang for their book as in you can see the Sports Direct all over the front of it. But, yeah, it wouldn't be for me. It's a bit of a Sports Direct dad with a small bit of a Cork jersey attached to it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so keep the comments coming in. We've got loads to talk about on the show. Will we get to directly to our topics now? I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah. We've cracked straight on. Yeah, so... I, were we starting off with the moment of the year? Is that where we decided to start off? Yeah, and I let I let you uh, I let you kick that one off. See okay, that, and then I'll I'll hop off your idea. Okay, so my moment of the year, and I'm going to talk a bit football, a bit hurling, and people get your comments in there, get them in as quick as possible, and we'll try to have your comment displayed while we're still talking about that sec uh, section. So, moment of the year for 2022 for me would be in football the penalty shootout Galway against Armagh. Now I was in Croke Park for it. Just the atmosphere was sensational. Obviously, there'd been that row. Then it went to extra time. And just the penalty shootout was so dramatic because that was the first time that a team was knocked out at Croke Park in, in the championship on penalties. I know it had happened between Clare and Limerick in the Munster Championship earlier in the year, but it was so dramatic. And in Hurling, Bally Gunner's late winner against Bally Hale. When Harry Ruddle hit that into the back of the net, it was just like... But then also the football one when it went in from Jerome Johnson at the last second as well for Kilku against Kilmacud, that was another shock moment. So those, I don't know which, but those would be among my moments of the year. Yeah, well, you've kind of, my, my, one of mine is definitely in there. Uh, to me, I, like, Hurling GAA doesn't get more dramatic than Harry Ruddle. Uh, Ballygunner had obviously never won in All-Ireland. That was the one they craved. Um, and just, it's like landing and it's like, it's like, um, Rocky and Apollo Creed, it's landing that punch at the perfect time, and they, they've no they've no response. They can't they can't come back. Dean Mason pucks out the ball and it's over. And even like TJ was talking about the other day, there were so many chances for Bally Hale, particularly in the early instance of the move to get the ball or miss a pickup or whatever. And then all of a sudden, Harry Ruddle gets the ball. The whole thing opens up. It's it's a shot from distance, but it's the perfect shot. There's bodies in the way. Uh, and it's just it, you're kind of suspended in disbelief looking at it. It's like it's literally one of those moments where your mouth is just and you're like, I can't believe what's after happening. And there's no chance for Bally Hale to respond. Uh, it was that to me, that was the that was the moment of the year. It's all the way back in February. But I think that goal and even just the name, Harry Ruddle, like it's not exactly your typical GA name, like John Smith or John Kelly or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a, it's a name. John that you Smith. Would, yeah. Like, an, you know, an average, like Irish name, shall we say. That couldn't be more English. <laughs> okay. Okay. But um, like Harry, Harry will forever go down in GA folklore for that moment. And in Ballyhale, or in Ballygunner folklore and in Bally, Ballyhale folklore probably as well for the wrong reason. 
Yeah, uh, Sean O'Shea's kick against Dublin says Jack Nolte uh, and says that uh, Orda Harry Ruddle against Bally Hale. Uh, Park Gray says was on the hill for the Sean O'Shea kick. Unreal noise. And obviously that those photographs that did the rounds uh, afterwards. Yeah. You know that brilliant one where Sean O'Shea is actually blurred out and all you have is this uh, unbelievable Caravaggio type picture of the crowd in the background. The Aguero moment of the, the GA Harry Ruddle says Fergus Butler. Do you know what? He's he's not far wrong with that. That's a, a nice way of putting it. Just on um, the Sean O'Shea thing as well, like that's literally a case of like uh, there was obviously parallels made between that and Cluxton's kick in 2011. But like that that has probably helped change the course of you know Gaelic football and maybe Kerry's course and maybe Dublin's course as well. Um and I know it was a winning score maybe rather than a leveling score. So some will say there was less pressure on it. But to get like that helped him get the job done in normal time. Who knows what would have happened had the game gone to extra time? Maybe Dublin would be all Ireland champions again. Um, you, you just don't, you just don't know. So like that has helped to change the course of Gaelic football history. And uh, seriously, big cojones on Sean O'Shea to, to kick that one when the pressure was on. The pressure was at its highest. Was it Matthew Tierney who hit the win winning penalty for Galway against Armagh? They beat them four one on penalties. Yeah. Like I just thought, the, and I noticed the penalties that Galway hit were unbelievable, and there were disappointing ones from Armagh. But just the whole drama of it was unbelievable, and maybe it was just building up through a crescendo throughout normal time, extra time, the row, the whole lot. Uh, but to me, I'd have that up there. But you can't not have. It's actually tough to decide between the Harry Ruddle one and the and the Kilku one. Yeah, it's mad to say that they both took place on the same day. And like again, it was they both had like it was over. Once it went in, it was over. There was no chance for, for nothing. Like so the significance of it was so so high. Could we say that that day was the moment of the year? Yeah, probably. Um and it's funny because it like I know it was February. It feels like so long ago because we're at the All Ireland semi final stages of the club football now, and we have the All Ireland club final pairing now. Um, so it, it feels like almost so long ago, but it's just like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever been a more dramatic day in the in the GA really. Like, yeah. How often do you get a double header that offers? And listen, uh, like for about ninety minutes of that, um, Kilku Kilmacud game was not particularly you know pleasing or aesthetically pleasing, but they, uh, it delivered in spades at the end. One of the boys actually had a double. I had a double done from maybe about two months previous. Actually, he said it from watching this show, he said he did Bally Gunner and Kill Coup because we were kind of bigging them up. And imagine like getting your bet up in those circumstances. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Richard Hogan says Martin O'Neill's sideline, that was for Moon Coin, would be mine for obvious reasons. Honorable mention for TK in the Munster final. Test case says Claire Limerick was the best hurling game of the year when Tony Kelly put a sideline in the last minute of added time. Tony Kelly sideline in the Munster final, some moment. And again, the atmosphere was unbelievable that day as well. We'll, we'll drive on to the next segment. And that is, what is it again? The inter county goal of the year. So to me now, there's a lot of different ones that I could look at here. Groat Hegarty against Kilkenny in the All Ireland final, just because it was just it just smashed you in the face. This particular goal, it stunned you when it went in. Uh, his goal against Clare as well, because of the great catch, which was from I think it was Tom Morris who did the catch, popped yep. it over. He did a little flick past the defender back in the net. Do you know another one that came to mind for me was Brian Kincannon's goal for Galway against Limerick. So it was a long ball and. I think Mike Casey tried to stay in front, but the ball, whatever way it was angled in, you I could see my vantage point anyway. I don't think the telly picked it up just as much because when you're seeing a ball about to be driven, you're looking up the other end of the field straight away to see what's happening. And you could see Concanon getting in behind and the way he gathered, turned and smashed into the roof and that, I thought that was unreal. And then Kyle Hayes against Cork because there was, you know, he was playing full forward this year and there was flashes of that goal against Tipperary because of the way he turned, ran at the goal and batted it in. Those are the ones that come to mind in hurling. Yeah, um, I think Hegarty's two goals, particularly that All Ireland final goal. I don't know if a better goal has ever been scored in an All Ireland final. To beat Owen Murphy the way he beat him, and even the way the way he picked the ball up to had the hurl turned to its side, almost perfect first touch, and an absolute bullet of one to the top corner. As regards football, David Clifford's goal against Mayo and the celebration. It looked like he was going to have to go off earlier on in that game. Fantastic goal. Rory Grugan's goal, um, basically from the throw-in against Donegal in that Ulster final, savage goal. Um, what other ones was I thinking there as well? There's a, there's been a couple of really, really good football ones this year too, I'd have to say. Um, 
those two would definitely stand out. There was obviously no goal in the All Ireland final. Comer's goal against Derry in the semi final. Like, have we ever seen? A, like, we've never seen a goal like that scored. The late in, breakaway. Yeah, yeah. Like where there's no keeper on the line. Like, if you wanted to sum up like 2022 in Gaelic football, and you know, advancements or changes or style changes that have happened in Gaelic football, that would be one. When would? someone have ever got a shot on goal in an All-Ireland semi-final at any stage in a game into an open goal. Like that was, like that just sums up something that's been a massive development probably in football over the last couple of years. But they're all kind of, they're all huge goals. Um, that you just, yeah, that you just, particularly that last one that you just wouldn't have seen in any, any other year. Yeah, ML89 says both teams that won, this is the club, by last minute winners are knocked out under a year later. Kilku and Ballygunner both lost, both lost titles to teams that they'd been beaten by en route to All Ireland titles. So obviously it was Glenn who beat Kilku. Jack Go- Grealish's goal against Cork, one that uh, scuttered into the net. I don't think we'd quite have that up there. Save of the year wouldn't even be a goalie. Damien Rex save on TJ versus Kilkenny was unbelievable. Uh, in terms of goals, Glass versus Clare says Fergus Butler. Benny Hearn scored a great goal at the start as well. Uh, Sox must surely get save of the year. So that's Saki, uh, Stephen O'Keefe. God knows which one. There were so many brilliant saves. Uh, Liam O'Callaghan, the West Mead goal in the Talchon final. Was that uh, Ronan O'Toole who scored that or who scored that? I, I can't actually remember. Uh, Luke Lachlan played a hand in the setup. I, I can't actually remember. I don't think it was Ronan O'Toole. I think he got five points in the Talchon final, but I don't think he got a goal. Um, that was partly to do with the build up of it. Didn't it? Didn't uh, didn't Luke Lachlan kind of pass? Kieran Martin scored a late ground. goal anyway. Yeah, Kieran Martin Mar- scored a late goal to, to kind of seal the deal, I think. But uh, it was somebody else got the go- Somebody else got the the first goal, and it was a lot to do with the setup. And I think he kind of came on to the ball at pace and just kind of uh, rammed it into the net. From what from what I remember, a couple of yeah, other good comments here. Jer Brown, Jer Brown against Clare uh, Owen says very good goal. Uh, Larkin Dolan, it was Shane Test case Larkin has it in Dolan. here. Yeah, brilliant goal. Yeah. Um, and another, just another one here that was brought up. Uh, Karma Costello's goal against Kerry was like yeah. there was like look when you look at it, there was literally only one place he could put it for it to needed. actually go in. And I think am I right in saying that that was their only goal that they conceded in the championship this year, Kerry? I think so, yeah, because that was so. the whole thing that they weren't conceding goals. And I think they only conceded either one or two in the league as well. So it just shows you how mean their defense was, and to get like that was that was so. Um, that was so tense then thereafter, like you're after breaching their defence and you're just thinking, listen, the Dubs are going to do it here. Haven't been down to 14 men for a long spell and all the kind of gamesmanship that went along with that game. But Kerry eventually pulled through, obviously, in the wind-up. Yeah, we all know what Shane's best inter-county goal would be, says A. Sully 180. Ah, look, I suppose Paddy McCormick's late winner against, uh, against Offaly in the All-Ireland minor final. It's hard to beat it now, even in terms of like, the technical quality, the free that was lofted in, getting up there first time, you know, the Offaly boys all being asleep, you know, it was lovely. Yeah, I, I, I think I have that nailed on for another category and it's not a particularly <laughs> happy category for me, to be honest with you. Uh, Shane Walsh's goal where he sold a heap of Ross Common defenders yeah. with two dummy solo shots in the Connick final was class too. Yeah, it really was. Uh, considering Kerry didn't concede many goals in the time in McCormick's goal, Ger Brown versus Clare, yeah, that was really nice just after half time. TJ against St. Thomas's, again, the gravity of the goal to get it right at the very end with the season on the line. He dipped the hurley in uh, water a couple of nights beforehand, so it had an extra power in it. Shane, I Alex- looked back at that recently. The power of that shot. Like, that's that's kind of, Remember, we talked about Jimmy Barry's goal the other day from the Fenton delivery. You mm. nearly have to slow mode because. He, he stands up to strike the ball. He's about 25 yards out. And the next thing you look, the, you know, the back of the net is just rattled. Like, it's brilliant. And Colin Fenley's standing in the way. The keeper, Jarrah Kelly, the keeper, comes out. And Fenley's kind of in his way. And there's probably a few people played their part in that goal. But, yeah, like, I remember getting goose, goose pimples watching that and even listening to the commentary of it. it just, that was an unbelievable. Because, again, that was last chance saloon. You score or you're out. Tim O'Mahony's a uh, goal versus tip after Fitzgibbon's flick. Look, Liam, obviously you're, you're a Corkman. There's no need to be bringing up scores like that. No need for it whatsoever. Uh, Kill one McDonough's club of the year. So, I mean, from my point of view, they, they had a brilliant year. Also, I'd say Clonalty Ross Moore doing what they did, considering the, the tough time they had with, with Dylan Quirk, of course, passing away. And there's 
you know, there's other people that passed away in the GA this year. So we were kind of saying beforehand we might have a little mention of one or two. Um, is, is there one or two you want to mention there? Yeah, Damien Casey would would definitely be one, Shane, uh, from Tyrone. Um, you know, he was given he was given the Nicky Rackard Player of the Year after, uh, and like he he was like by far the best player in that competition and has played a huge uh, part in Tyrone's rise. And that was just such a Tragic circumstances when, when that happened as well, and you know, I know a good few people up in the the Dungan and Owen Rua club as well, and just it's uh, like what he did on the pitch was one thing, but the character he was off the pitch was a totally different thing, and just an inspiration to everybody up around there. So uh, it's been a tough year for 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 them guys up there, and it's been a tough you know for everybody involved with Clonalty Ross Moore as well. But no doubt the memory of those two guys, and you know lots of other GA players that passed away during the year, they'll be remembered forever. Yeah, like Brian Mullins, Sean McCaig, I mean, even that, that young man up in, in Tyrone, Conor McCaughey as well. Like, there's an awful lot of people out there, so we don't want to mention too many because we don't want to leave, you know, people out. But, of course, there's a huge amount of them, so it's very tough on those people. Um, if we're going to come back to the goal of the year, I would say it's Keelan Malloy against St. Thomas's as a late entrance. That's brilliant strike the other day after the great solo run. Harry Ruddle against Ballyhale, that has to be mentioned as well. So between the hurling football, the club, we're going to have to pick one here. And for me, oh, Rory Grugan against Donegal as well. I'm not sure if you mentioned that earlier. Yeah. That was the one where I was just started the game, long ball in from Oshin O'Neill and just blasted into the back of the net. What would, which one are you kind of thinking? I'm leaning towards Grod Hegarty in the honour and final because I, I don't think I've seen a more perfect finish in the biggest game of the year. Like it was literally the only place he could have put it where all Murphy couldn't stop it, and that's where he put it. And I think part of it was, was too, is so early in the game, to get a moment like that, that early in the game, it kind of just set up what was to follow over the next 74 or 75 minutes. I, I don't think we we can um, ignore Harry Ruddle here. I think it has to be Harry Ruddle, just because... So are we given was... Harry, have we given Harry Ruddle two... We're giving Harry Ruddle two categories? One and a half, one and a half. Okay, okay. Led Zeppelin or Zed Leppelin says, uh, uh, Hego, some goal in fairness. It was. Ah, uh, come on, it won in All Ireland. And it was a strike from 35 yards out. Yeah. Uh, I might have added it. About, you're talking about Harry's, Harry's goal again. Yeah, Harry's game. Yeah. Harry's, <laughs> Harry's <laughs> game, yeah. Ah, listen, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And listen, yeah. it's something that we'll be talking about in 20 or 30 years. And I suppose uh, that's the sign of how good it was. Yeah. Actually, no, Paddy McCormick's goal. Yeah, I was going to bring that up somewhere else, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm having no part in that. <laughs> okay, intercounty point of the year uh, in Hurland, it it just has to be Tony Kelly's sideline leveler against Limerick that sent it to extra time. That game had literally everything up until that point, and then you're just thinking he just stepped up. The angle was so tight; it was obviously on his preferred left. Like would be better hitting it one from his left than his right that side, just because of the angle he wanted to bring it in, and. I don't know. He just kind of felt like he was going to put it over even before he stepped up, and the degree of difficulty was so high. So I think I, I think I'd be in agreement there. Um, it was just yeah, and it set up even more drama later on. Uh, later on in the game when it brought it to extra time and that kind of thing. You see a little doggy behind me in the corner. <laughs> Bring him over. Bring him over. No, no, no. You all right, buddy? Uh, she got something. She got something in her mouth. I think she must be eating something. But um, Tony Kelly, Tony Kelly against Limerick for me. Yeah. I do want to mention a couple of Aaron Galland's points at the start of the All Ireland semi final against Limerick. The ball's played in, and he just turned on the sixpence with uh, with Dahi Burke chasing him down, and still managed to fire him over the bar. I just thought they were incredible. But uh, get your get your comments in, Zed Leplin. He definitely agrees. Tony Kelly, one hundred percent in football. Then Shawnee Shea is winner for Kerry against Dublin. I uh, would definitely be have to have to be high up there, wouldn't it? Realistically, like as again, I just said the ramifications of it. Um, that changed potentially the course of this Kerry team and maybe changed the trajectory of the dubs as well. Who knows if that if that had stayed level, the dubs might have won in extra time and we'd be talking about something completely different here. We'd be talking about the dubs bouncing back and Kerry being underachievers and David Clifford being the best player to have played to have never won in All Ireland. So um Jamie Malone's uh, match winning point against Ross Common was another one. It was a it was a good point, but under the circumstances. So a great point. Yeah, oh, great. But I'd say the the scale of it and what it meant for them and to get them into an All Ireland quarter final probably did make it a great point. And the fact that he was coming up from wing back as well. And Fergus Butler just says there as well, like Declan Hannon, his point to put them one ahead off his weak, you know, not doesn't really have a weaker side, but off his left side, 
100 yards out, wet day, ball a little bit heavier, harder to get accuracy. Like that point has nearly been forgotten because of what Tony Kelly did about a minute or 90 seconds later, but that was an outrageous point. Yeah, and uh, do you know, actually, it reminds me of that time when Kevin Nolan scored a great equaliser in the 2011 yeah. All-Ireland, but just beforehand, Kieran Donaghy had scored one of the greatest points ever from out. One that the... stayed up in the air for about 15 oh seconds my God, and then dropped back was... over the bar. Yeah, that yeah. was unbelievable. Uh, TK point definitely says uh, TOS1986. Honourable mention to Mikey O'Dwyer versus Kilkenny. Yeah, that was very, very good as well. Shane Walsh has common. Keen O'Neill on his knee deserves a mention. Certainly that was against Cork. Uh, Shane Walsh in the first half against Kerry, the one where he was on the sideline and caught it. Take your pick any of the Shane Walsh points from play against Kerry. The Reno Neal free versus Galway oh, yeah. is up there. It is, of course. Yeah, and, uh, and you know what? That's agreed with by A. Sully 180. Reno Neal's free was better than O'Shea. O'Neill point was do or die. O'Shea had safety blanket of extra time. Do you know what? The the lads aren't wrong. Uh, from a football point of view, uh, I'd throw a blanket over either of the two of them now, to be honest with you. Should we go um, in for blankets? Come here, look, this point as well. Now, I'm not saying it's the best point of the year, but I really like this one from Stephen Sherlock. Sherlock he, he got an awful lot of nice points Still this year. Sherlock Once or twice, hand passing it over people's heads. Oh, look at that. Don't from him outside of the booth. That's magic. There's, um, there's something about an outside of the boot effort, isn't there? It just, it's so, it looks so well. Uh, and I know it's probably a low percentage shot and sometimes they end up over the, at the corner flag and other times they end up going over the bar. But it just, it looks so good because it's going one direction. I actually just watched the goal that Roberto Carlos scored for Real Madrid this morning where he was about a yard from the, the corner flag. Do you remember that? On yeah, the end line? Yeah, yeah. And it came back in. There's just something about an effort like that. It looks so well. Yeah, true. Okay, so it, point of the year. I think it probably... Yeah, it probably has to be Tony Kelly just ahead of Keen Lynch in the hurling. And I'm going to go, do you know what? The lads have swayed me there. I'm going to go with Reno O'Neill's levelling free. Can I just ask you as well, right? In other way, um, you know, a winning point or an unbelievable point in open play, you kind of don't have that much time to think about it. You just mm. do it. Whereas with the free, I don't know, is it even, even is it even better to put over a sideline or a free when you're literally standing there for a minute and the whole you know, the gravity of the situation. But you can fully steady down, so that's the counterpoint to it. You can fully steady yourself. Yeah, fair fair point. But, you know, some people, a lot of players, the vast majority would overthink the situation. You ever on a break in snooker and you're, you, you start thinking, oh, what am Last I on night. now? <laughs> what am I on now? Oh, you're on 30-something and you missed, an, you missed a routine black off the spot by a mile because you've taught the whole the scale or the height of the situation. So, uh, I, 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 they probably do balance each other off, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't put anyone off having a place ball as the point of the year or the score of the year because listen, those the ones we're talking about there, the three of them were all place balls, but you know, they were huge, huge scores at the time of the game. So are we agreed then on Reno O'Neill? No, I I'd go with Sean O'Shea, to be honest with you. I go with Sean oh, Shawnee how- Shea. Yeah, Johnny Shea. Uh, Mark Russell scored a few beauties for Tip in the Division 4 final versus Cavan from the outside of the boot. He did. They were absolutely cracking scores. I remember them well. Keep your comments coming in, even if you're you're a late watcher here today and you're, and you're only kind of watching the early part of the show while we're live a few minutes ahead. Just keep the comments coming in. We'll, we'll go back on them as we get through the show. The club point of the year, right? So uh, we were just preparing beforehand and probably didn't really have enough time to fully think it through. But one that came to mind to me was... Um, do you remember Ohm Collins, uh, the drum and inch goalkeeper in, tip, in the oh, Tipperary yeah. Championship? He scored a point from his own 21 in Semple Stadium against Bursley. That was that was an incredible strike. That was nuts, yeah. Um, that's everything that's wrong with the GA or hurling in my view. <laughs> that's that you're able, that you're able to do that on a, on a day like that. Um, we probably, like, I probably should have mentioned... Um, one of Jerome Cattle's goals in that county final where he jinked back inside, that was a brilliant goal as well. He he showed everyone the right and jinked back into the left, mm. finished it, finished it beautifully. Actually, with with Nilo Maris stick pass as well. Um and I don't know if you're I don't know which one I think Nilo Maris set up the two of them, did he? Did, didn't he get a brilliant goal? The first one, uh one was into the town end where he jinked to the jinked to the left, and the other was uh, was into the other end and uh I'd say they're probably there. They're probably there too. Billy Dunn's effort. Uh, Andrew just says there for Owler. Remember that one? Was it, that was a was that a doubled on effort from out by the sideline? I think. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, it rings it rings a bell. It was out definitely like right in on top of the sideline um, from about seventy or eighty yards. And I think the commentary, the lads. I think I might have it here. This is the point of the year. 
Hopefully this is it here now. Yeah, let's go back there again. You've got your TikToks, you've got your... Yeah. Yeah, that has to be up there. That's pretty tasty now. That's so well, well remembered. Even and try like, that, like from from there. Like maybe he was maybe he was trying to just get rid of the ball and deliver it inside. But uh yeah, like outrageous. That's that's Owen Quigley's one was in the middle of the field where you know you're taking a shot. Out there didn't you know, as Andrew says there, it is it's pure purely instinctive, like really. Yeah. Okay, keep your comments coming in. Is there any football that comes to mind? There must have been some unbelievable ones that I'm just not thinking off the top of my head. Uh, from a point of the year point of view? Yeah, there's got to be so many and just... Shane Walsh would have kicked a few for, for Kilmacud any, anyway this year, definitely. Um, uh, there's so, sometimes there's so many games and there's been so much going on, it can be hard to ring a bell. Um, it's the sort of thing I wouldn't mind nearly coming back to in a, in a minute or two. Just because I think I think our minds will be uh, we'll have a few more ideas maybe uh, when we when we move on and our viewers obviously obviously come in with some great ideas as well so I'd say maybe that's the one to come back to for the club point of the year yeah uh, oh Sean O'Shea sideline for Ken Mayer also a sideline as well uh, says Jack Dalty. Uh, James O'Donoghue got one from the sideline as well. Yeah, that was a cracker, wasn't it? For yeah. uh, was, was that for Legion or was it East Kerry? I, I just can't remember. I think it was Legion. He was only about 13 yards out as well. And I know it was a free, but Willie Cleary's free to level it up for Killeran the first day against Killadangan was a huge one as well because it was all on the line and they'd, prob they'd probably played better and they would, have, they would have ended up losing and obviously wouldn't be county champions were enough for that. Mm. Colin Casey in Iscara against Castle Martyr. Was that the drawing game or the replay? Fair question. Uh, oh. I, can't, I can't actually remember that one. And Owen just says as well, honourable mention to Cahar v. Aherlow relegation playoff penalty save. Who's Cahar? Cahar, sorry, apologies. Ka I, well, how, it's not... Cahar Healy would say it's Cahar Healy. Do you know what I mean? It's spelled the he's, exact same. But he's C-A-H-A-I-R. He is not. I'm Cahar Healy that plays with Leash is C-A-H-I-R. You're yeah, thinking of... Cahar O'Kane is not. Yeah, sure that's not who I mentioned. Right, I was tuned out. <laughs> Who'd blame me? Uh, what's what's our next section? Our next section is... Uh, oh, yeah. Year? Scandal of the year. What is the scandal of the year? I'll tell uh, you what the scandal of the year is. To me, the scandal of the year is John Keenan given what to me was an unbelievable refereeing performance in the Munster final. That Munster Harlem final will go down in history as one of the greatest games ever played and probably the greatest Munster final in livid memory. And the man doesn't get another inter-county match thereafter and is basically struck off the list from the inter-county list for the rest of the season. Um, to me, he should have got the all Ireland final after that. Uh, and I know there was a couple of incidents missed or highlighted on the Sunday game thereafter. Like, but in a game like that, you just cannot see everything that's going on. He said as much to me after, you know, if he'd seen the two incident, incidents, he would have called them, but he didn't see them in normal time, uh, nor did really anybody else until they went back and looked at it again. So I think it was an absolute scandal that he didn't get another game, be it an All-Ireland semi-final or a final thereafter. Um, and anybody with a brain in their head would have, you know, lauded him for his performance in that Munster final, and instead he was punished for it. And I just think is an absolute scandal. Liam O'Callaghan, the handshake as Parik Grace uh, finishes out here. Cody and Shefflin. Do we call it a scandal? I don't know if we call that a scandal because my really, God, it was fairly pumped up in the media, us included. Yeah, was it a scandal though? Because we don't really know like what was behind it. I, I, I'd probably put that into another category, maybe controversy of the year I'd say that is more so than a scandal but is that not two cheeks of the one arse <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it was controversial but you couldn't say it was a scandal yeah well scandal of the year was the Armagh against um, a Galway brought uh, yeah that was bad there's no point yeah. in saying any different that that was that was bad um, some of the behaviour involved in it was obviously scandalous too listen did we in, did we enjoy it at the time? We probably you can be did. sure of it because, like, there, there, you have to say I'm not condoning anything, obviously, but you have to say that there's a there's a part in most of us that just love a good row. Like, there's no like there is like you don't like it like, but that row went 
to the other side of the line. You want to see it staying, you know, within, you know, lads rolling around and whatever, a bit, a bit of crack and more people getting involved or whatever. But when it goes to the other side of the line, then it's too much. And obviously, fans and that are handed out, which they obviously were. Did we skip shock of the year? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Limerick versus Kilkenny under 20. There was some controversy about a point. Yeah, that definitely wasn't over the bar when Conor Henley Clark pulled it down. Good, uh, a woman hitting someone at a hurley. Down, this was, I think everyone knows what this refers to. It was Nave Barogue against Dowler Um uh, Shock of the year, result wise? Shock of the year. Um, that's a fair question. Shock of the year. I'm trying to think. I'm probably going to be going back to something maybe in the club season. Thomas has been beaten by Dunlai. was a fair shock. Uh, Dunlai were four to one underdogs, obviously coming into the game. Uh, other shocks. Does anything jump out to you for for a shock of the air? Um, tip getting hammered all the time. <laughs> for anyone who had been following their fortunes this year, I don't think it was that big of a shock. No. Um, Maybe mystery the- mystery of the year. I think that tip comes under mystery of the year, as in. They basically disappeared throughout 2022, and there's a missing persons uh, report sent out, and we still haven't found them yet. You're a bad joke, aren't you? You're <laughs> you're a bad old joke. Uh, Clonmel commercials, yeah. Um, Shane Walsh Hawkeye for controversy, yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, I meant to mention that earlier. Obviously, the the system failed, and it was stood down then for the Dublin Kerry match. Uh, Derry winning by 11 points. Bally Bay. Shock of the year, Westmead versus Wexford. Yeah, that late leveler there. Derry, Tyrone, Hawkeye not working. Yeah, lots of comments coming in here. Trimmed and beaten Dainsford in, in Kilkenny and in Nolan Park as well. Uh, I think that's a, that's a really good one because I think Dainsford were 1-20 to 20 going into that game. Um, like if we're talking about, you know, odds would suggest that was probably the biggest shock of the year. Uh, definitely give uh, Westmead an odd there as well. Realistically, um, I think Westmead have been beaten well the week before. Um, and no one really expected uh, any anything that much from them going down to when Wexford came to Cusick Park that evening, and they produced uh, a massive result. Funny, funny, it kind of spun Wexford season around a bit actually, and they actually raised things from it. But that was a huge night for Westmead, one of many in recent years. They seem to have this um, the habit of producing a big result in uh, in Cusick Park, like obviously beating the Kilkenny Twenty Ones a good few years back, which they. Which I always bring up to Eddie Brennan nearly every time I'm chatting to him. That's like a bad smell. It will follow him around no matter where he goes. No matter how many titles he wins, no matter where he goes. Upper Church reaching the tip football final and the Hurland semi-final. It says, oh, yeah, that was an excellent excellent season out of them. Uh, do you have another one to, to go through here? No, I think I think, um, I think think Trim beating Dainsford is one. And that kind of opened the door maybe a bit more for the likes of Bray um, to go on a run maybe in Leinster. So... I know I'd be happy to go with Trim. The disappointing thing from a Trim point of view is that they produced two big upsets, beating Dainsford and Tullamore, and still didn't get their hands on on Leinster Intermediate Honours, which is definitely disappointing for them, obviously. Breakout player of the year, I'd say that has to be Killian McDade of Galway. Now, if you want to go hurling, you'd say Kieran Joyce. I would imagine Mikey Butler as well would be up there. But for me, in football anyway, Killian McDade, what a season he had. And, you know, of course, he's always had the quality. That's why the AFL teams were sniffing around and why he was involved there. But, um, geez, some of the performances he gave, the All-Ireland semi-final, uh, the All-Ireland... He was just excellent, true, wasn't he? Even against Armagh as well, when they were struggling, he got that brilliant goal. I'd say what was the biggest kind of... Not surprise necessarily with Killian McDade is he's obviously been back a couple of years now. Uh, didn't look like that transition back was going particularly seamlessly. Like he 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 kind of went from he definitely didn't go from not to a hundred, but he went from you know forty or fifty to one hundred this year. Like his performance this year on rate, like he was nominated for football of the year. Shane having not been on, you know, you know he played obviously for Galway for a couple of years now, but he wasn't producing anything like that type of form. So I think from a football point of view, he's definitely up there. Mikey Butler was unheard of at county level until 2022. And he walks away with Young Hurler of the Year and beats Sean Finn to an all-star. So I think from a hurling point of view, he'd definitely be, he'd be right up at the top. I think two other players I think deserve uh, mention as well. Someone like Dermot Ryan, who was obviously you know known at county level, I'd say he brought his form to another level. David Fitzgerald as well uh, with Clare. Um, had been you know has been around and has produced things and good performances, but again brought his game I'd say to another level this year. But on a hurling side, I'd be going for Mikey Butler, and I'd, I'd agree with you on the football side. Killian McDade would definitely be right up there. Yeah, I, I, Carl O'Neill as well is sort of show like 
there's more to come from him. So I don't know if this is totally his breakout year. That could be next year, but obviously he's shown signs. Could I say as well, a lad who I felt has been held back a couple of years, Craig Morgan had a really good season in a Tipperary team not going well, and it's a huge shame that he's after doing his cruciate. Uh, keep your comments coming in. Let us know who we're missing out on because there's definitely people that we haven't mentioned. Would Jason Foley be a breakthrough player? Not sure. I think he was like he's been around. He's played in All Ireland semi-finals and All Ireland finals before, so I'm not quite sure if that would uh, fall into that bracket. Um, mystery of the year. So this is one you wanted to talk about, and you're obviously. I feel like you're setting me up for for a shot across the bows here. No, really. I kind of kind of mentioned it already. Really, um, like mystery of the year is kind of what nearly happened to Tipperary in. 2022, a team that's been, uh, they were only All Ireland champions three years ago, and then. Like, but it's been of, three bad seasons in a row, like so. It was a continuation of the yeah, two previous. Be beaten in an All Ireland quarter final in 2021, um, 2020 they were beaten in, uh, they were beaten by Limerick, obviously. Galway. That, yeah, and they were beaten by Galway. Then that was in a quarter final too, obviously. But just to to disappear so far off the radar this year. Uh, within 2022, and it's, it's it, was, it really has been it was a mad year for Tipperary from the point of view of uh, obviously they've changed managers now as well. Uh, finished the bottom of the monster campaign with no points like that. They must be saying that they're probably not mystery of the year because I think for mystery of the year is if you look at it, Waterford were all Ireland contenders and the ones that were going to take down Limerick uh, after that league final against Cork. And, you know, they obviously maybe missed an opportunity that evening. I think it was April 23rd that evening against Limerick when uh, Keane Lynch went off injured and they were beating three points. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a two, three-week layoff. They come back, Cork beat them, and then an absolute no-show against Clare. And, you know, we've talked to a couple of people recently, a couple of Waterford players recently, and you even said it to Ozzy, and I was chatting to Corrick Daly last week, like where Waterford have gone and what has happened people still kind of scratching their heads over that. So um, I'd say Tipper, that, you know, that low on the hurling radar at the moment, I wouldn't even put them in the mystery of the year and I'd probably give it to Waterford. Yeah, it's true. John, <laughs> Keenan, John Keenan's ex-communication after the Monster Final says, Hugh, Paddy, uh, last, last week of Waterford season and the no-show in NSC, yeah, that was just such an odd performance. Claire filleted them. James Daly, Colin O'Neill is an unreal talented. He's from a small uh, rural club and maybe a tad underrated. I'm not sure if he is underrated. I think we all just massively rate him. I reckon he'd be a star for us down the line. Shane O'Brien from Kilmallock in a few years. Uh, Shane O'Donnell's a Donegal footballer. What was it that happened again with the tweeting and, and stuff like that? Remember that? You're not, you're not the ringing a bell there now, I have to say. There was definitely something that happened there. I know it's club level, but he had some year Patrick Fitzgerald. Yeah, he definitely yeah. did. Club breakthrough uh, players, Ben O'Connor and Patrick Fitzgerald. Okay, I would say mystery of the year. How awfully managed to get themselves relegated in football against Cork in the manner they did uh, when the sideline was knocked back to the goalkeeper and then he ended up picking it up as it was going out over the line, uh, losing the Munster all our, our minor All-Ireland final and not getting to the Joe McDonough final. That's some mystery that she managed all of that. Um, you don't know enough about Offaly Hurling because it's not that big of a mystery, to be honest with you. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think they were good enough to get to the Joe McDonough. Um, I would I put that minor final in. That was probably one of the moments of the year. It was also, if you're talking about like heartbreak of the year or the most dramatic moment of the year, like that was unbelievable. I like I think you were up in Crow Park sitting beside Pat Nolan from the Mirror, who's obviously a, a Tullamore and Offaly man, and I was sitting down in Nolan Park and. I don't know. I could just, you could just see it happening. You could just, I, I would just see it happening and you could just, I, it was, it was an unbelievable moment. Like literally, I think there was about two or 3,000 awfully people ready to invade the pitch, particularly young lads and young ones. And then all of a sudden, 30 seconds later, head in your hands. And in fairness, the good Tipperary cohort that were there, they were the ones that were out in the pitch. Um, uh, it was unbelievable drama. I've yeah, for an underage game, you'd rarely see the like of it. Uh, the only thing I'd say is another bit of drama as well. The uh, the, the penalty shootout between Tipper was it Tipperary and Clare at minor. Clare and the Munster minor. minor, minor. Yeah. That was unbelievably dramatic. Cause, geez, I was only looking the other day. Um, TG Carter broadcast something like two hundred and two or something live games this year. It's unbelievable. Like it's great that we're getting to to watch all these games and because they probably would disappear into the ether otherwise and people wouldn't even know that we're going on. But I would have that minor final down for heartbreak of the year. 
Uh, I'd probably have it down for most dramatic moment of the year. Could be goal of the year as well. If we were on the right side of it, I'd have it win in about 10 categories. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would. You wouldn't want to talk about anything else. Actually, you'd have insisted on the watch along, wouldn't you? Oh, that would have been unbelievable. Remember this? Remember when this happened? Remember when you did this stupidly? <laughs> <laughs> you ignorant joke. Um, funniest moment of the year. Now, I couldn't actually think of anything off the top of my head in terms of funny things. So we're going to have to rely on the viewers here. Do you have anything? Uh, I don't think I don't know if it was funny or maybe it was just a bit ironic. Like Morris Deegan getting absolutely peeled in his last high profile game, the <laughs> Kilmacud and uh Portari to Leinster final. It probably wasn't funny for him and he was winded, but he absolutely took it like a champ. Like most people would have blown the whistle and stopped play, but he was just down in his hunkers like that, looking at things going on. But uh he probably looked back on the on the funny side of it uh after, but it probably wasn't particularly funny at the time. Like Nolte said, another moment of the year, not on the field, but Spillane, Pat Spillane, his emotional on TV, thought it was some television. Uh, Richard Hogan, could it be that defeat would become a huge positive for that Offaly team? Learning to lose one so dramatically could be a blessing. I agree. Maybe. No, I said it, and I, and I said it after, because I've not been smart, and it's funny, the Offaly, uh, a load of those guys are playing for the Offaly schools. As we speak, uh, they're playing St. Peter's College in a Leinster A quarter final, so it's the first time Offaly have had a combined school, so I think it actually will help us in the long term, because all those lads would have had their, their egos absolutely blown to the moon, and I don't mean that in a bad way, that's just the way it is in a smaller county where success is, you know, relatively rare, um, whereas about a week or ten days later, they were all brought back down to earth uh, fairly crushingly. Would I prefer that to happen at minor level so that they'll be better at senior level? Yeah, I would, rather than it happen at senior level. Uh, so hopefully that'll be a lesson learned going forward. Yeah, and actually throughout my youth and, and whatever, going to matches when Tip would be in All-Ireland senior finals and minor finals, and you'd often hear people say, I don't mind if they lose the minor as long as they win the senior. Um, so maybe, maybe you'll have that now in years to come where... Maybe, do you think he'll ever be in a minor and a senior final on the same day again? Oh, Janie. Um, <laughs> I'm only winding you over. That, no, that's never happened. In, uh, we've obviously seen him in 86, 87, 89. Um, it's very, I would say the odds are against it now. The only counties generally that happens there, t your tips, your corks, your Kilkenny's. Yeah, your goal is. Yeah, your goal is. Out, out, outside of that, it doesn't happen too often. Listen, Shane, I take either one of them, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a quiz now. We've kind of been threatening and promising to do this all year, but we've got uh, our man who's always working in the background, Daryl Flynn, coming in here. It's going to be quiz time. We're going to get the old music going, sure, why not? Uh, so welcome, Daryl Flynn, to the show here. And Dara, you're, you're going to do the quiz for us, so uh, take it away. That's how we get on. Good. Good. Uh, no quiz master now myself, but we'll give it a go to see who's top dog anyway. Yeah, that's the master job. of the that's year the anyway. Job. So we haven't decided who's going first. Do you want to do rock paper scissors or do you have any fuss? Okay. Yeah. Okay. On the count of three, Shane. All right. Yeah. One, two, three. Ah yes, first in. <laughs> you got me. I think right, there's a delayed go. reaction there. <laughs> Jake, go first for the football. Bernie can go first for the hurling then. Perfect. Enough that way. Do you, do you any forfeit here, Shane? Plan? Yeah. What do you think, Shane? What's that? A forfeit? Um, yeah. Well, there was talk that if, if Kilkenny win the All-Ireland, I have to wear a Kilkenny jersey to the Tip County final. That's not realistic, anyway. No one, no one, no one your look up for Church Drumban and probably be in it and it will actually suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd, say, I'd say leave the forfeit maybe to leave the forfeit to the viewers maybe and we'll go with whatever is the maybe the most ridiculous forfeit so get your comments yeah. in uh, Andrew I actually got a haircut I got a haircut last Saturday so oh no, no. what about like a skin fade you have to get a skin fade they're actually pretty slick and you might not look like a fool for once okay I, I, that's okay I'll agree to that so you have to get your head shaved no, because that's, I'm going to look ridiculous. I did that once before and I definitely looked like I was very badly ill. Okay, you have to leave your beard off for a month. No beard at all? No beard at all. I think, I think a week is fine. Okay, a week will do. Two shows. Okay, okay. Perfect. Burst into the questions there, Dara. All right, so Shane, who was the top scorer in the football championship this season? Oh, God. Uh, I'm going to go with Shane McGuigan. 
No, incorrect. Shane Welsh. Do I get one thirty-six? Oh. I was going to okay. ask. Do I get a chance no, to no. come in? Do we? No, no chance no. to come in. Okay. No, no. Okay. So, Mike, your first question is: Who is the top scorer in the Talton Cup? John Heslin. Yeah, bang on the money. One twenty-five. <sighs> come on. Hey, Shano, you're on oh. the hind tit already here now. <laughs> Well, it's good to have that. No, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Go on. Go on. Who does Shea Welsh make his Kilmacud debut against in the Dublin Senior Football Championship? Oh. Temple Oak Sing Street. Correct. <laughs> Get in so, there. Yeah, have some of that. Have some now, of that. Now, the only thing I'd say now, Dara, and I don't know what you're going to ask me, but you're asking a, a basically a glorified dub, a dub related question. So I'm expecting an awfully related question here. One. No, forget that Jesus. there, on you go. Far from that now. Who who did Derry All-Star Connor Glass play for in the AFL? Oh. That's a good question. Oh. Thank Wikipedia for that. Sure, surely there's a, a counter on this at some stage. He has his, he has his wife Googling as no. we speak. Uh, Brisbane Lions? No. Paw Torn. Ah! Poor. poor that's poor now who was it i didn't ha he was too busy Hawthorne. roaring I didn't hear Hawthorne. Oh, Hawthorne, yeah. so it's one one it's a round three shane this season saw the first ever penalty shootouts take place in crow park when galway and I drew the quarter final what was the final score in the shootouts four one correct this that question should have been pulled out he mentioned it earlier on in the show no, I only mentioned who scored the winner. No, he said 4 1. He actually did. Look, no, 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 Bernie, Bernie, one, Bernie. Yeah, just one, get one. over, will you? Yeah. Go on, let's go. Eaton Rafferty became the first goalkeeper in championship history to score two points from play when Armagh played which team? Oh, Lord. No, I. I... I don't know, so I'm going to say Donegal. It was Tyrone. Ah, you coward, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm under pressure so now. 2-1 two, two to Shane. So, second last round of question of the football. Shane, how many county titles in a row have Bally McCarbury won? 41. Bang on the money. 3-1, Bernie. You're under all oh, pressure. Right, and my mind. questions are way harder. Oh, my God. Go on. <laughs> so, what have the All-Ireland Football Finals of 1969, 1992, 2001, 2010, 2015, and 2022 got in common? No goal scored. Bang on the money. Woo! Wow. Good stuff, Bernie. Good stuff. I'll give you that. It's the last so football question, isn't there? Yeah, last round football questions. So, during the whole Ulster Football Championship, who's the only player to score past Christy McCaig from play? Oh. That's a tough one. I'm wondering, did someone do it for Cavan? In, uh, no, no, sure, Donny Gall played Cavan. Is there a time um, limit, Dara? Joe, will you wish up? Um... <laughs> I'm gonna go. We'll I'm gonna go. Later. I'm gonna go with Darren McCurry. Oh no! Bang on. Correct. <laughs> you should have known the channel straight away because he said in an interview a couple of weeks ago us that Darren McCurry was was the hardest one here to mark. Damn! I'm under Look. pressure now. Four two. So last question in the football. Only nine clubs retained their county senior football titles this year. Can you name four of them, Mike? Uh, Kilku, the Glen, Kilmaco Croaks. Yeah. Oh. Strand. Yeah, correct. Wow. And the other remaining teams were Nate, I, 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 Port Ireland, Denier. Denier. Yeah. 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 Okay. That My was, the, that was the one I was teetering on. Newcastle West. Okay. 
Perfect. Lovely. So, Let's go going now. We only going have to get four out of them. Now. Going into the hurling round now is Shane on four, What's Michael on three. What's so it's four? Is it all four three? Four okay. three to you, Shane. Yeah. So, Mike, you're up first now. Before yeah. the start of the championship, who said they can all wait in the long grass before whoever beats Warford will go up the steps? Derek McGrath. Correct. Such an easy question. Jane, in 2019 <laughs> was the last time Limerick lost a championship game against Kilkenny. How many games have they gone unbeaten since in championship? Hey, take out your abacus, Shano, will you? 24. Uh, incorrect. 16. Maybe that was tough. Two, uh, that was tough me. now. That was, tough, that was a tough one. We're, we're all evens. All aboard. More on. So, Mike, next question is, how many goals were scored in the Joe McDonough final this year? Between Antrim and Kerry. Oh, I was um, in that. It was a cracker. Nine. Correct. Come on. So it finished. Come Antrim, on. Five twenty-two. Carry four twenty-four. So Shane. Oh, you're, Shane, Shane, oh, you're under pressure now. I love <laughs> been. I love been first now at this stage. Who did Patrick Horgan surpass to become Harden Championship all-time scorer? Joe Canning. Correct. So easy. <laughs> Mike, your next question is How many counties have won three in a row in all our inherent titles? Zero. What? Three, sorry, you're talking about three in a row club titles? No, no count, county. My, my apologies. He's already got it wrong. He's already got it wrong. Oh, my apologies. I had to refresh. Oh, no, no, no. My apologies. You lost the point. Are you talking about how many counties or how many teams? How many county teams have won three in a row? Three. Four. So Limerick won it this season. Kilkenny have done it twice. Tip have done it twice. And Cork have done it four times. That was poor. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Shane. Including replays, how many times has Brian Cody managed Kilkenny in all our hurling finals? Okay, so he's won 11. We've bet him up and down the field a few times. Um, how many all Ireland finals has he been in? Okay, so he's lost to <clears throat> Cork a couple of times. He's lost to Tip three times. And there's been two replays and he's won 11 18 close but no 19 cigar. 19 oh thank god that was tough it's so easy miss one in fairness so easy miss one you saved me there shano in fairness so, can I just say to our, to, to our viewers not none of them none of them are writing in the correct answers right in here for us as well which is fair play to them. Like, none of them are commenting in or anything like that. They're just enjoying it. They're keeping it as an, a level competition. No cheating, anyway. Come on, so let's we're do five, this. Last, five, last round, two yeah? more round of, No, two more. Two more. Okay, okay. So, how many championship games did Kilkenny lose this season? Three. Correct. Woo! And then Shane, your let's question see. is Here, now. Shano, let's see if you have you got the cojones, have you got the Tony Kellys on you, have you got the Shawnee Shays on you here? <laughs> Are you able to perform under pressure? Serena O'Neill's. And the need is great. Pressure is only for tires. So yeah. your question, Shane, is which Galway player was controversially penalised for taking too long over a free in his sides Leinster champion? Connor Cooney. Ah, uh, that was. Yeah, Hang on. Yeah. So, okay. what's the score now? Is that five each? Six each. Sticks all. So, Michael, who scored a goal in the fifth minute of added time for Westmead to earn a draw with Wexford? 
Oh, what a question. There's a name popping out and I don't know if it's the right if I don't know if it's the right name. But Derek McNicholas. Correct. Come on! Boom! Oh, thank so God. The pressure's off. And Jay needs just to level it. I nearly hope he doesn't level them, only one tiebreaker. So, Shane, you've got on, enough, on about enough this year. So, what was the final score between Offaly and Tip in the All Ireland Minor Hurling final this year? Tough question. This is a horrific question. That's a tough question. For sure. That's tough. Oh. I have something in my head as well, but. Okay, I'm going to go with something like, I, I don't know is the answer. <sighs> oh. 217 to 216. Close, but not right. It was 117 to 116. Oh! Woo! So your champion is Bernie winning 7 6. Yeah! Where's my crown, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so annoying. Look, Dara, brilliant questions. I have to say the questions were pretty good now. Obviously, I got yeah. do done up a couple of times there, done up like a tipper, but <laughs> overall, brilliant Asher. questions, Dara. I couldn't make them easy, you know. Dara, oh, super, you super stuff. That was brilliant, Jay. That, was, what, a what tough, I that was a tough one for him now. That was a tough one. But, Shano, that was your only successful moment in, Tipper, in Tipperary for the year. You really should have remembered. <laughs> yeah. Go on, what were you going to say there? Yeah, my, yeah. Only, my other okay. moment was, you, and no one's mentioned it so far, it's Michael Crazy. <laughs> 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 what did you say there? I missed it with his roar. So the only moment no one's mentioned so far is Michael Kiley's goal at UL this year. In the Fitzgibbon. Oh yeah, that was, brilliant, yeah. that was that, brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. That was an absolute yeah. cracker. Dara, brilliant stuff. I'd say we'll have the quiz as a regular feature, so we'll have you on again soon. 100%. Matter oh, bother, lads. Thanks. Cheers, Dara. So that was the quiz. We'll get the, uh, we'll get the old music stopped up for a while as well. Uh, I'd say I enjoyed that. Obviously, it's ended in a lot. It's ended in a lot of pain for me, but I did really enjoy that. And in the comments here, been banging on about it for so long, Shane. Not doing your research loses you your beard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not looking forward <laughs> to that. I mean, I think in terms of like looks, the more my face I cover up, the better I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was good crack. Now, yeah, it's funny. Like you can think you know. Yeah, you know, whatever you like. And then when you're actually put to the pin in your collar like that and you have to give an answer, um, yeah, it listen, it sorts the men from the boys, and you have a man here and you have a boy over there. <laughs> and he's gonna look like a boy a beardless boy. Um A Sully 180, I speak on behalf of the viewers. No one wanted either of you to win. <laughs> <laughs> you should have come out with it, Mourinho type, you know, the best player I lost. Yeah. <laughs> Hurling heritage. Uh, what what was the next section we had to do? Uh, Renaissance Player of the Year. That's what I wanted to do. And um, funnily enough, two of them came to mind when I was looking at this. And they were sitting beside each other at the All-Star Awards. TJ Reid and Noel McGrath, who both had very good seasons. Yeah, both were outstanding. Um, there was probably, you know, TJ was, even after that game down in Salt Hill where he missed that free from in front of the goals and was taken off at half time. People are people are very quick to write someone's epitaph at Inter County or whatever, but like look at the year he had after. Imagine you'd said that day, no, no, he's going to get nominated for hurler of the year and get his sixth All Star. Like you just wouldn't have believed it. And obviously, like without having a go at Tip, like I'm not I, like as, like Tip went badly this year, but Noel McGrath's performances in a team that was not functioning were absolutely outstanding. Like that day down in Walsh Park, like he was a one man wrecking crew. Like he was unbelievable that day. And even against Cork, and like Noel McGrath went hitting freeze this year that he'd never hit really at inter county level before, apart from the odd long one. Uh, and he was outstanding. So I uh, they're definitely uh they're definitely two good candidates, I would have to say, particularly from from a hurling point of view. Funnily enough, we talked about um we talked about someone earlier on in the show. Uh, and I can't think of who it was. And I remember they fit this renaissance 
of the year uh, category very well, but I, for the life of me, I, I can't think. I can't think of who it was. Well, TOS one nine eight six is Shane O'Donnell, and after the couple of injury ravaged years he had, he's definitely right up there. And do you know what? Considering the, the severity of the concussion injuries, I think that actually makes him number one in this. Like he's not a particularly old player; he's not in his thirties. But you know, I think for that, from for those reasons, and given how severe it was, it would probably have to be him. Is there anyone else who came back from really bad injury actually that to have a particularly good season? You've caught me on the hop a bit here. But Shane O'Donnell is definitely one because I'd say even deep down himself, and he's kind of said it, that like he didn't think he'd be back playing Hurling again, let alone back playing club Hurling, and then alone back to the levels um, that he was at. So, yeah, he probably, O'Donnell probably does deserve it. And like he ended up with his first All-Star as well. Um, his first All-Star this year, having, you know, not been, you know, on the Mike radar. Casey. Mike Casey. That, that, sorry, that was who that was. We were talking about uh, Cork and Limerick earlier on this year, weren't we? Or something was mentioned there. Like Mike Casey, um, he actually said that they were on a team holiday at the end of last year, and that he basically nearly had his retirement statement written out. He was getting no joy with his knee. I think he came back this year early, and his first training back, he had a setback with his knee straight away again. Yeah, and then he came back and slipped in in the league. Uh, but he was, he was fine in the league. And then they just threw him in against Cork. Remember, he was listed at number 18 and they started him. And he made that catch at the end. Remember that inspirational catch at the end? And he was just brilliant. So for a player who maybe thought that they weren't going to get back at all, um, Mike Casey would definitely be high up there too. Yeah, Adrian Mullen, given his injury, yeah, like he's just going from strength to strength. Who's closest to Messi and Jay? I'm thinking Peter Canavan or Gooch. I'm thinking David Clifford. Clifford, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I was in a... Uh, Cleary's pub there just across from uh, Conley Station the other night with a load of dubs a few old fellas good old crack and they were basically saying that the media have Clifford hyped to a level that they've never seen before he's like wouldn't lace them all Conley's boots that's all I was that's all I was hearing but uh, Clifford yeah if we're talking like Clifford comes in uh, that messy category I think it's probably bring it up now uh, if we're talking about player of the year across all codes Clifford has had the year of years. So, Munster League, League, Munster, All-Ireland, Kerry Senior Football Championship, uh, Kerry Junior Fo Football Championship, Munster Junior Championship. The only co competition he played and one of the only games I think he's lost this year was that Sigerson Cup final. And Sean Kelly, the way the former has worked out, Sean Kelly deserves like a cap cap to be doffed nearly every day to him at this stage for keeping him kind of quiet enough that day but i do think clifford is the clifford is the player of the year across every code yeah i think so yeah and uh, i'd say in terms of young player of the year you'd have to give it to mikey butler wouldn't you yeah uh, uh mikey butler is outstanding again what we said his first year at inter-county level and to do what he did and like we mentioned tony kelly from one of the moments of the year and Mikey Butler was able to keep the wraps on him completely in all Ireland semi final. Like Tony Kelly's never been shut down to that extent before in any game. And he, by all accounts, I believe he was carrying not coming into the game. But Mikey Butler just had the strong hand on him that day. So, yeah, I definitely would give him young, young player of the year. What about 16th man of the year? And by that, we mean so, um, substitute of the year. And this is something that John Kiley referenced at the All Star Awards that he felt that maybe um, that that should be looked at in terms of awarding that. It's something I've seen in the NBA over the years, that the sixth man of the year award. And it's one of uh, Kiley's own impact subs. Uh, David Reedy, I suppose, would be certainly in that conversation. Yeah, Connor Boylan probably came into that conversation a bit mm. more this year than he had in other, in other years as well. Um, they would definitely be up there. Has anybody had the impact? Like, there's plenty of subs had impact. Like, but did anyone have that Kevin McMenamin style impact off the bench this year and consistently that uh, they weren't, you know, they weren't starting the games. They were nearly particularly held in reserve to have that type of impact. Just thinking from a football point of view. Yeah, I'm even scrolling through some of the fixtures over the years, and there's nobody really jumping out, jumping out at me. Was there anyone on the Kerry team that was coming off the bench? And yeah. Harry <laughs> it's Harry's yeah. year. It's Harry's yeah. year, isn't it? In fairness, mm. Jeez, he's getting some mileage out of this. That was back in February, and he's still getting uh, raved. Well, about I, it I often, I often thought like how, like you know, Seamus Darby's talked fairly openly about you know the amount of you know the you know alcohol that was pushed his way as a result of doing what he did in '82. I wonder, like, 
like if Harry wanted to, I'd say he could you know just do a pub crawl at different nights of the week and around Ballygunner or around Waterford and different people would be buying him a drink, I'd say. But uh it, it definitely was one of the most famous impacts and you'd have to say but I I'm nearly more talking about somebody who did it consistently, um, like was consistently coming off the bench and as in that was nearly their role throughout twenty twenty two. Yeah, there's got to be a few. And just off the top of my head, though, I am struggling to think of somebody. Yeah, Killian Spillane has been mentioned a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah, he'd probably be up there. Uh, skill of the year. Uh, keep the comments coming in. We'll come back to them if we've missed out on them. Like, for example, Mikey K here says, was just reading Mark O'Shea and he was saying Kerry had Gooch and Donaghy and decided to put them together and they came up with Clifford. Jake Cullen for days four came off the bench in Kilkenny Intermediate quarterfinal, uh, semi-final and final and scored crucial goals in three matches. Yeah, that's, that's a very good That's kind of one. what we're looking for, isn't it? That type of thing, yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, skill of the year. So one that, that you mentioned beforehand was Kira Griffin of Waterford lifted up that hurley after it got smashed in half. That would definitely be there. And Keane Lynch knocking the ball over the bar with a broken hurley as well against Cork. That would have to be mentioned. Yeah, uh, ASW one eighty just mentions Adam Screeny, a good few bits of skill. Yeah, like the the little ball tipped over the keeper in uh, All Ireland uh, minor semi final was deadly. Um, I would probably give it to and listen, it's probably something that we've seen before in games, but maybe not to this level. And I don't think it's you know a skill from the GA has ever gone as viral as this did across other countries and that. But Dara Canavan's dummy solo against the Glen, where. You know, the poor old fella that went to block him ended up, it was like a WWE style bump off the ground. Like he, he had him hook, line and sinker. Um, That would probably be one of the pieces of the skill for the year. And obviously Keane Lynch's point uh, off his knees. It's amazing to think that as injury ravaged a season as Keane Lynch had, that he still managed to, you know, to be sent off in the Fitzgibbon final wrongly to score that point off his knees against Cork. Um, he still had plenty of little bits and pieces throughout the year, even though he had a really interrupted, interrupted year. Yeah, Richard Hogan, do sidelines come into skill of the year? Yes, uh, definitely. Depends on the day, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, Adam, going back to, said, he's going back to Mooncoins. Uh, he's going back to Mooncoins, uh, All Ireland junior final winner, definitely. Yeah. That was outrageous. Martin O'Neill, yeah. Uh, Sean Finn, I think that was the time the high ball came in between himself and Conor Cooney, and he found a way to get a hurley to it to flick it back to himself, I'm guessing. Hogan Cup final, St. Brendan's wing forward did a basketball style bounce, unbelievable skill. He did, yeah, that was absolutely class. Um, okay, next section then. Team of the year. Did we talk about team of the year already? No, I don't think we did, actually. No, we did. Um, do you know who I think it is? Go I think it. it's got to be Sarsfields and Camogie winning back-to-back -back within the one calendar year. So they won one of the titles, I think, in February and then the other one just now in December. It's fair all going. And they had their injuries uh, both before the game and in the All-Ireland final as well. Didn't Maria Cooney go off injured? And then yeah. Sarah Spellman, who had been injured, uh, came in for her. Um, that's yeah, they're definitely high up there, especially for a team who had lost. They'd lost, I think, three finals before this. They'd lost twice to Schlock Neil. They'd lost once to Owlert as well. Uh, they're definitely right up there. I'm just thinking if there are any, if there are any club teams, Barry McCarby doing their 41 in a row would be up there. I suppose Schlock Neil, yeah, Schlock Neil doing the 10 in a row in Shinron. Um, Shinron would definitely be one. I think it captured uh, it captured a lot of people's imaginations uh, at the time as well. Uh, even Ferns as well, winning their first winning their first Wexford title would definitely be up there too. Um, I think I think Sarsfields is a good shout though. I think Sarsfields is a good shout. Yeah, three All Irelands in a row for both Sarsfields and Ballyhale, says Richard Hogan, and had Orla McGrath missing between the All Irelands too. Yep. Um, by the way, actually, I meant to say one of the skills of the year, some of those catches that TJ Reid had against Clare, yeah. like his Mr. Go Go Gadget Arms. Uh, Shea Cunningham, Dun Loy, that's a, that's a good one as well. Kil Shannick says uh, Daryl Lahan. Um, what else are we to talk about? By the way, young player of the year as well. I mentioned, I meant to say Emma Duggan. She's just going from strength to strength. Oh, to yeah. Lead ladies, footballers. You, you kind of nearly forget how young she is because she's nearly that season. She's a season pro at this stage. Like, um, and she, uh, I have to bring it up as well. I, I presume you saw it as well. The last two to three minutes of that All Ireland semi final between um, Mead and Donegal. Oh, was, uh, I've never actually seen anything like it. And for a team, I know the word process is used too much or whatever, but for a team to trust what they're doing that much, they were lit. Galway or uh, Donegal had a full press on them. 
and they were a point down. They were trying full court get, press now? Full court press, yeah. Full and they were trying to get the ball back off them. And Mead were just nervous, passing the ball across their 14. There was about like 20 to 25 players inside, we'll say, the 45. And they were giving the ball to the goalie, and it was a couple of yards out from the line. I, I've never seen the like of that before. And it was fascinating to watch. And it just a team that was absolutely full belief in what they were doing. Now, if they conceded a goal, we'd probably be hammering them because it was, you know, kamikaze stuff. But I've, I've never I've never seen the like of that, men's, women's, any any sport really, to have that much faith in what you were doing when, you know, the need was at its highest. I thought that was absolutely fascinating. I see Dennis Hurley, a uh, journalist down in Cork, he says that Pat Ryan is actually hopeful that Mark Coleman might be able to play some part in the 2023 championship. But uh, both he and Alan Connolly will definitely miss the league so, um, you know, it's obviously a knee operation for Coleman. So it would be great for the Rebels if he can come back, assuming they're still alive in the championship. Um, what are you look, most looking forward to in 2023? I'll give you my one, Tip being back. Well, sure. Listen, Shane, if that many practice games played before Christmas, they're surely going to have some sort of a bounce. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I won't lie what I'm looking forward to most is the Munster Championship in Hurland uh, and obviously Leinster man but like here let's do it let's do it right now hand on heart let's predict one two three four five in Munster like because and that because that's what I'm looking forward to most like three into five does not go and two are going so to I keep well. hearing yeah yeah and it's going to be absolutely fascinating like We'll, ha- we'll just have a quick little, have a go at what you think. Jack Dunphy is a good one there now. The battle between Kerry and Dublin have both uh, go deep into the championship. And Paul Mannion and Jack McCaffrey have been back and even Pat Gilroy have been involved. Like that's something, I put it to you this way, the Munster Hurling Championship and, you know, these people, the personnel have been back involved with Dublin have me excited before, for 2023 before it's even here. Like, and that's, that, that says something. Um, but let's have a go, have a go at Munster. Let's, let's okay. honestly now, right? Hand, take your hand away from your heart. Let's talk. Let's just say if you had, like, yeah, you had to put down a bet on who the top three were, and you know your livelihood and that of your family depended on it. What are we talking here? Okay, the teams to get through are Tip, Limerick, and Clare. Really? Yeah. Give me the order. Limerick. Clear tip. Okay. Um, Limerick, now you're talking well, about all these teams have new management teams, or most of them have new management teams. Yeah, it's fascinating. Of, of, that's that's because it's and it's that makes it more fascinating because there's an expectation on Pat Ryan with the underage success. There's an expectation on Liam Cahill coming in. There's an expectation on Davy coming in. Um, can you imagine Davy if Waterford don't get out of Munster again? Jenny Mac. Um, I would go with Limerick, Waterford, Cork. Yeah, Limerick, Limerick Waterford, Waterford Cork. Cork. So you think Clare are going to flop big time like Michael O'Callaghan is saying here? So, see, the thing is, you could easily end up not getting a monster, but not flopping necessarily. But um, yeah, I have. Yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put tip four and I'm gonna put Clare five. Wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right, okay. Uh, what was your biggest disappointment of the 2023 championship season? Biggest disappointment of this season. Um, biggest disappointment. I've got mine. You Go can it, you yeah. can think yours over. So the Hawkeye mal- malfunction between Derry right. and Galway, thus proven that Bubbles actually did hit the winner in 2014, so we were robbed. <laughs> Michael Verney being taken off the market by his wife, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd say there's a lot of people crying over that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Tyrone and Mayo footballers both being as disappointing as they were. St. Mullins' performance against Kilmacud Croaks in the Leinster semi-final. I thought that was, it was just had a bit of a no-show. and that I expected a really good game, so I was quite disappointed with that. And Clare's massive flop against Kilkenny. That should have been a cracker, and it ended up being an absolute waste of time. Yeah, that's fair. Fair point. Coming out, coming after that monster final, they're thinking, "Jesus, we're probably thinking of Clare versus Limerick, part three in an All Ireland final," and they totally flopped in the All Ireland semi final. I'd say, and that's. I wonder. I, I think that's partly into my my judgment on Clare for twenty twenty three. In that, maybe there'll be mental scars of that as well. I I don't know. Um, but yeah, as regards disappointments, I'm not. 
I'd actually say the Dublin ladies footballers were disappointing in 2022 because I was expecting a massive backlash after Mead surprising them. There's no point in saying any different in 2021. Uh, and they were beaten by, oh, who beat them again? Was it Armagh beat them? And then, then Kerry beat Armagh. I think um, that was that was definitely disappointing. Um, and I'd say my own, my own club uh, underperforming in the county semi-final would have been very, very disappointing too when a chance was there. And I'd say you'd say the same about Kula as well. Missing missing an opportunity and underperforming in the big games. And would you not say what happened out on Nolan Park was pretty disappointing for you? I'd go a lot uh, stronger than disappointing. <laughs> uh, biggest honest. disappointment will be the end of Cody on the line. Yeah, there's something in that as well. I, I just... Derek Ling, I'm sure, would be a very good manager and have plenty of success with Kilkenny. But you have to say, like, tip people love to hate Cody as well. They no, go, we they, love him. <laughs> well, you loved him the last couple of years when you were beating him in finals. But beating him out the gate. Beating him out yeah, the gate. There was something about his aura on the sideline. Um, yeah, there was something about his aura on the sideline that did add to things. And it was just, it's been such a constant, like... So many Kilkenny careers have only known one guy on the sideline, and he was always there. It was the one guarantee uh, throughout, you know, the hurling hurl matches year on year on year that Brian Cody would be there, uh, and he's gone now. So yeah, I wouldn't say that was a it's a disappointment going in, but it's definitely going to be a big change going into twenty twenty three. Not seeing Keen Lynch says PL seventy four. Yeah, he was definitely a miss. What and there's point- what's one of the most exciting prospects for twenty twenty three? Keen Lynch been back on the pitch and potentially Limerick getting and a hell of a lot better even than they were this year which is a frightening prospect I'd say for a lot of people and Peter Casey as well being back from injury yeah. as well Watford did a disappointment of the year after uh, winning the league so this is back to the who's going to be uh, number one to five in order in Munster for Richard Hogan Litcher, Limerick are the obvious one would expect David to get bounced from Watford clear building tip finally have uh, Cahill back and Cork have Ryan Cody bet uh, tip in the championship 09, 11, 12, 13, 14 and four league finals. So he really loved tip. To be fair, Cody also bet Tipperary in 02 and 03 as well. So don't forget those. Whoa, as well. fair play. In, yeah. <laughs> in recent times, Tipperary have fairly had their way with uh, Kilkenny. Kilkenny haven't beat tip in the championship since 2014, when, of course, the uh, Hawkeye point did go over the bar. Someone it brings a lot of. Someone suggested that we do an All Ireland semi final from 2012 watch along, the old 10 year anniversary. <laughs> Lara and Tommy following each other around. That was a grim one to watch. We, we will have to do a watch along at some stage because I'd say it'll be a right bit of crack. Maybe we'll do it with a live game. I'm not sure, but um, uh, you had to be there a moment of 2022. It's funny. Uh, I kind of nearly teed you up for this one, and it's a man that we've mentioned earlier on, dear. I wasn't there. I was watching it at home. I don't know, disappointingly or otherwise, a couple of the big moments this year, I wasn't there. So I wasn't there for Harry Ruddle and I wasn't there for the Munster final. And I would have loved to have been at two because I just don't know when, you know, a game like that is going to happen again. again, And I don't know when uh, a moment like that is going to happen again either. But you were obviously, were you, you weren't there for both, were you? Were you definitely there for Harry? I was there for, for all of them. All nice. of them. Yeah, nice. I don't know. Garot Hegarty's goal was a bit of a you had to be there moment because it just, yeah. you know, it was just a, such a shock to the system. And I had a perfect view as well watching it arrow in. But yeah, it has to be, again, we started off talking about the, the All Ireland Club final day. It has to be the All Ireland Club final day again because it was just like for Lightning to strike once with a last second goal to win the game is something. But for it happened twice, you know, I, I just, I know it was he had to be there mo- a moment. Is a full day or a couple of hours of GEA, is that a moment? Does it really matter? That, that had to be it. Yeah, uh, it's funny you say that. The, you had to be there for me would be tipping awfully in the minor because it was just, I've never seen, uh, there was, it's like there was a big balloon there, an awfully coloured balloon, and it was getting so big and it was just ready to explode. And then all of a sudden it was just like that and it was gone to nothing. And it was... Uh, uh, <laughs> you're, you're playing the world's smallest violin for me, I'm sure. Um, but it was... It was, uh, and then as well as that, I was delighted to be at the, the, the All Ireland semi final against Clare. And my nephews from New Zealand who'd never seen Hurling play before were there, and that was great. And they were actually at the final as well, they were leaving the next day. Um, so yeah, Tipperary destroyed, destroyed, <laughs> destroyed their moment, but it was an unbelievable thing to be there for. And I'd say we probably have to give an all mention to, um, oh damn, what was I even going to say? 
Oh yeah, Derry winning their first Ulster title in so long as well. I'd imagine that was brilliant to be there for. That's See, a renaissance as well, Shane, because Derry were not on our radar at the start of the year. There's no point in saying any different. And if you look how they've climbed up through the ranks from what Division Four to Three to Two under Rory Galler and an Ulster title thrown in there in the middle, like no one with the best will in the world, very few people from Derry were thinking that they could end up with silverware at the end of the at the end of the Ulster campaign, and they did. Yeah, and then finally, the game of 2022. Yeah, I think um, because the All-Ireland final was so good, a lot of people were clouded by, because it's the, big, you know, the biggest game of the year, a lot of people are clouded by just how good the Munster final was. I thought the Munster final had absolutely everything, and I don't know, there's something about a game, you know, it, it, was, it was a bit wet, and the conditions were tough that day, weren't they? They were really tough. As Tiger oh, Woods tough. said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, really I, I just I loved that game. I thought that game had absolutely everything in Kelly's display and his sideline. It had one of the great displays in a final and one of the great moments in a final. Um, and Nimrick was still able to find a way. So it'd be the monster final for me. Oh, and it would be for me as well. Right, that's it from the show. That's it from another year at our game. We've been on the go since the middle of 2019, and uh, the channel is building the whole time. And we're uh, loving having you watching us a couple of times a week, every week. It's the last show of the year. We might have an old video or two up here or there, but that's the last full show of the year. We'll be seeing you in the new year. And I think like the pre-season competitions get going on. Some of them are even January the 3rd, so it's going to be straight back into it again. Michael, great stuff all year. We'll be chatting Hello, to you Happy again Christmas. Soon. Happy New Year. Mind yourself. Same to everyone out there.